Welcome back to Human Resources for the People. It's a human capital revolution. Today we're going to be talking about this article article from Greenberg and Trowert. And it's called Death by 1000 Instances, OSHA's new instance by instance penalty policy. And this is a new policy coming to a factory or workplace by uh, near you. And we're going to be talking about it because it's really interesting. It should cause a lot of headaches for employers, but it also makes a good bit of sense. So let's dig right into it. So about two weeks ago, OSHA issued a memorandum to their regional and area officers, which is just, you know, the local sites of uh, OSHA enforcement, which provide guidance when issuing instance by instance citations for high gravity, serious violations of OSHA standards. So we'll talk about what IBI uh, means and stands for. Because, I mean, it's a really con um, interesting concept, and you kind of would be surprised that they're not doing this, right? So IBI violations are sort of, uh, sort of ticky-tacky rather than general, right? So whereas normally OSHA might give out a single violation and single fine for uh, lockout tagout, for example, here they would give out a fine if, for example, uh, for each machine that's not locked out, tagged out appropriately one by one or, you know, not documented appropriately, which could be crazy. I mean, that's an obscene amount of or could be an obscene amount of violations all sort of stacked on top of each other, each with increasing fines. This part of the article just covers what I just said, but the it notes that, for example, a single serious violation is more than 15,000. I, I have a video that's linked down below about this, uh, but it's gone up to 15,000. Uh, and generally speaking, that would be one um, total fine. for If there were five separate machine guarding incidences, they would fine it five different or they would find it fifteen thousand dollars now that'll be more than sixteen sixty thousand dollars so it's a huge it could be a huge increase in fines now i think the most interesting thing about this is what sort of spawns this idea why is it necessary has our uh rates gone up is it out of control uh, compared to the rest of the world and the answer to this is not really the 17 of the highly developed countries that report accidental deaths to the International Labor Organization, the ILO, which is sort of the arbiter for international OSHA and, and for, for HR, actually. Um, of those, the United States is seventh of the 17 that reported deaths. So uh, it beats out Malta, which eh, Canada, I think Canada at least it suffers from its mining and its logging and things of that nature. But Canada, Luxembourg, New Zealand, Italy, and Spain. So there's quite a few countries that do beat it out, right? Uh, Ireland, Austria, France, Japan, etc. But I would argue that many of them uh, are, you know, benefit from a working conditions that are less physical and less manufacturing. Uh, but but you can see here that the United States is right in line for the most part with re with respect to workplace accidents. There's always a opportunity to get better, but it, it, we are not too bad actually. So when they do these IBIs, they're going to look at whether or not a w there's a willful repeat or failure to abate violation. Meaning, did they just keep messing up intentionally? Are they failing to report? Is, uh, is it related to a catastrophe or fatality and whether or not uh, it's related to an injury or illness that was the result of a serious hazard. So they're not going to give these IBIs ticky tacky. They're really going to be focused on those willful and repeat violators. This means that employers need to get better at these willful violations and continue to tell the truth when reporting. As someone who has worked in human resources in many industrial settings, I think one of the biggest problems we have is reporting, either under or over from an OSHA perspective. Uh, a lot of times employers sort of self-incriminate when they don't need to, but employers are going to have to get a lot better to avoid these IBI viol viol violations. 
So what do you think about this? Is it good? Is it a good path forward? I actually think it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Um, I I think that there's no thing, nothing wrong for doing it across the board, regardless of whether or not it's a repeat violator or not. If someone is breaking lockout tagout rules, you know, they, they need to be punished. Now, it, should it maybe be mitigated a bit? Should the fines be reduced if, if, or not reduced, but reduced across the board so that you can just constantly and consistently do and find these? Yeah, I think that that's probably more where this should go. What do you think? Comment down below, and please like, share, and subscribe. It helps out a new and starting channel. Thank you, guys. Bye.